This is Gerardo Del Real with Resource Stock Digest. Joining me today is the executive chairman of Moss and Gold, Mr. Michael Hudson. Mike, how are you today? Good uh, morning from down under, Gerardo. Well, let's get right into it. We've had a lot of questions come in in regards to Mawson's latest announcement. Now, we know and we've talked about this many, many times that the sum of the Mawson parts, in my opinion, were always very, very undervalued. And so Mawson just announced a restructuring plan to split into three separate companies. So we're separating four assets into three companies. And I wanted you to provide the context and then and, and the motivation for the restructuring plan. And then we'll dig into some of the details here in just a bit. Yeah, sure, Gerardo. It's, uh, it looks complicated, but uh, if, if we can strip it down, it is relatively simple. So the four assets that Mawson Management has created over the last few years together are what we believe worth less uh, as one uh, than the parts. And and I think if you see the reaction that the market's given to this, uh, the market sees that also. And, and there's a hell of a lot of uh, value inbuilt, uh, we believe, to come. So, so the four assets are, of course, the million ounce inferred resource PEA stage gold cobalt project in Finland, Raya Palot. And, and that project had a PEA done on it, which articulated basically that more resources need to be found. So that needs drilling, that needs to, we need to add a minimum, another half a million ounces there, and then rule, rule of thumb, uh, our, our economics, of course, will look a lot better because the CapEx should stay similar um, and the NPV will increase dramatically. So that's that's the key aim for Raya Palot. Let's get there, drill, we've done a lot of work uh, reviewing and getting different eyes on that project this year. And uh, there's a there's a strong uh, belief that there's step out potential. So low hanging resource fruit, if that makes sense. So that that's asset number one. Asset number two is Southern Cross. Uh, Southern Cross is listed on the ASX, of course, it's got one of the most exciting discoveries in the space. And Mawson owns 51% of it today. It was spun out, of course, of Mawson in May last year and listed on the ASX down under. And, and that's putting out hit rates of gold uh, that, that are pretty much hard to beat globally uh, and some of the widest and highest grade intersections that, uh, that you'll see in the space today. So very exciting. And, and, and that 51% is worth somewhere around 75 million Australian, about 65 to 70 million Canadian dollars. And that position is escrowed by the ASX until May 16, 2024. Then the other two assets are the Sweden uranium assets. Uh, we've, we've staked almost 23 million pounds of historic and uh, 43,101 uh, uh, resources that that are literally every hard rock conventional uranium resource in Sweden. The, the opportunity to mine uranium in Sweden or explore doesn't exist today, but the government is talking very positively about changing that. They've just removed a 30 plus year ban on building new nuclear power plants. They're 45 percent in, uh, ingrained with nuclear power supplying their needs and you know with nuclear and hydro and biomass their their carbon footprint is very low the whole energy security argument has changed dramatically in Europe of course with uh, what's going on up there so basically we've got all this, this the the conventional hard rock uranium resources staked ready and waiting and a massive option on that legislative change well, should and if it happens. And then and then the fourth asset is a Sweden gold discovery. Uh, it's it's uh, we hit 1.8 meters at 28 grams uh, there in in a, in a small program, the first ever program on on that asset. It's expandable and um, and in the shadow of the head frame of millions and millions of ounces. That's called Schlefti, Schlefti or 
discovery, or Shalefte discovery, I should say. They're the four assets. Together, they're hidden in Mawson. At any one point over the last 18 months, Mawson has traded at a discount to its southern cross shares and, and everything <laughs> else is worth essentially zero, right, or, or, or seen as a liability. So we've been working hard to work out how to unpack that. But I, they're the four assets, I think. Um, I, I'll, I'll put it back to you now to, to direct where you'd like to go. Excellent. So let me put myself in a shareholder's position here and ask, if I am a current shareholder of Moss and & Gold and I actually appreciate the exposure to all four of these assets and want to continue to have exposure to these four assets, what do I, as said shareholder, do? <laughs> well, uh, perhaps I can articulate what Mawson's management and board thinks is a very good plan. If you're a Mawson shareholder, and let's say you've got 100,000 shares in Mawson, what we're going to do, and we'll just carry that 100,000 shares because it's a round number, if what we're going to do is spin out the Finnish asset. Now, that is being spun out into a, a new Finco, which is a, in a special vehicle that's just been set up. It's called Springtide Acquisition Corp. It, it, uh, it's, it's got almost zero capital, just a little bit of capital to pay for a few financials to set it up and to start this transaction. And, and we're selling Finland into that company for six and a half million dollars that Mawson will receive back. Springtide will raise 15 million, uh, eight and a half will stay with, with Springtide. So the EV on that will be six and a half million, which we think is very, uh, the lower end of the range. There's no doubt about that. But the key here is that every Mawson shareholder will have the pro rata right to fund that company on a 20 to one basis. So then if you've got 100,000 shares, uh, you'll have 5,000 shares you can buy at $1 each into that new company. That will create an exceptionally tight, very well-funded company that we believe should trade higher uh, in any half-decent market with what is a, a very well-developed project that we've developed up there. It's a, it's a little reverse engineering. Uh, you've, got to, you've got to pay uh, to play, if you like, but that uh, the, the the project needed funding uh, at any rate um, in whatever structure it has, and this way we're giving Mawson shareholders the exclusive right to fund it. So we're selling it to ourselves essentially as shareholders. So that's that's stage number one. That is a key, the key point is that Finland needed to be drilled this winter. We've gone through all the work. We've worked out it, it has some low-hanging resource fruit, as we discussed, and the window is January to April. If we didn't get that drilling done, then we'd be waiting again until 2025, that same period. So we, we need to get that funded. And we also wanted to fund that separately to the Southern Cross shares. Now, if we raised, if we had it, the Southern Cross assets, Sunday Creek and, and Raya Palot in the same company, and we raised money in that one company and we spent it on Finland and didn't spend it on Southern, the Sunday Creek asset, it would make no sense because the Sunday Creek asset is clearly uh, globally significant. The Finnish asset's very good, but, uh, but it doesn't rank as high as the Sunday Creek project. So we didn't want to dilute that Sunday, that Sunday Creek project by raising capital to spend in Finland. So that's why we've gone and put it into a separate special vehicle that Mawson shareholders have the exclusive right to fund. And if every shareholder takes up their pro rata right, that $15 million is done. Excellent. The, yeah. No, no, no. I am just right, right, right back at you, Mike. Let's, uh, let, let's get into what I assume is, 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 you know, the main event per se, just because of how special that discovery at Sunday Creek is. The Southern Cross shares, how will those be distributed? Or how will they be dealt with, um, and that they will be distributed. Uh, but oh, and and, and uh, I should just stand back and say that that finish uh, spin out needs shareholder approval. So 
the documentation is just being uh, collated and being sent within the next day or so. Um, so shareholders will receive all the information they get to vote on that transaction and need 66.66 uh, uh, um, approval from shareholders who vote. The, the Southern Cross shares will, Mawson, the original Mawson will remain uh, with the Southern Cross shares and the uranium and the Swedish gold. After May 16, when we when the company can do something with those shares, it's stated its intention that it will in specie distribute those shares to, to Mawson shareholders. Now, the, the record date is, hasn't been set. The ratio will de determine uh, how much uh, Mawson holds at the time and how much it contributes if Southern Cross raises capital or if Southern Cross doesn't raise capital. And that's a separate discussion uh, for, uh, for Southern Cross. Uh, but but Mawson uh, today owns about 93 million shares and it's got about just sub 300 million shares uh, on, on issue. So approximately it will be about a one to three distribution uh, as it stands today. So for every 100,000 shares, let's use that same number, you'll get approximately 30,000 Southern Cross shares distributed to you as a Mawson shareholder. So if you pay to play in, in NUCO, you'll have NUCO shares pro rata um, on the same holding basis as you do in, in Mawson today. You'll get your pro rata distribution of Southern Cross, and then you'll be left with the uranium plus gold in Sweden um, with your original holding of 100,000 shares still. And, and then that is a massive option on legislative change up there in, in, uh, in Sweden. And in the meanwhile, we've got this gold asset that uh, we will explore in a, in a low cost manner. Mawson will have six and a half million bucks in the bank to, uh, as flexibility to, to, to explore that and or the uranium projects when when things and if things change up there. Let's let's touch a little bit more on the opportunity on the uranium side. We clearly are in a bull market that I think is on the verge of really really taking off and accelerating. Can you speak a bit to the potential scale of the uranium assets in Sweden because again, I know that it's subject to the implementation of the regulatory changes, there's a lot of momentum for that. Let's assume I'm an optimist by nature. You know this about me by now, Mike. Let's assume that that happens as everyone hopes that it does. How valuable can those uranium assets in Sweden be for Moss and shareholders? Extremely. Mm. <laughs> I think it's, I think is the simple answer. There's, there's seven historic resources there's, there's literally, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of holes that the government drilled in the 80s during the last energy crisis, and, and they found all these deposits. They were drilled essentially like postage stamps, so very detailed drilling, but each what each deposit is is open and, uh, and can be made a, a lot larger. So what we need to do is find the most socially acceptable project and technically the better project or the better projects and 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 select one or two of those and and drill those out to make any one of those uh, assets uh, sufficient scale and I'd use a rule of thumb about 20 million pounds for one asset alone and that that would uh, and that would uh, create an exceptionally high value opportunity for Finland to be self sufficient in its energy supply chain or at least help it get to that point, because as I said, they're 45 to 50 percent nuclear today. None of which is that uranium is sourced from within country. And 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 uh, we've got a great start because we've got every conventional resource state waiting for that potential change. Hmm. Any any clarity on a potential timeline for those changes? Well, the minister just came out over the last three or four weeks and stated it was going to happen. Uh, but we know politics and how how things can be said and not occur, or the timeframes can be 
uh, of the low peak. So really, we don't have a huge uh, view to, to where that's going, but the momentum is in our favour in terms of everything that's been stated there by the current government. So I, 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 I ho I'd hope to see something by mid next year, but uh, let, let, let's see where it all goes and, and everybody can Google Sweden Minister Uranium comments and, and uh, just see where that's all heading. Excellent. So in the meantime, we have the SPINCO, obviously subject to approval. We have Southern Cross shares, we have gold, we have maybe uranium next year, and you're also delisting from the TSX and will be applying to list on the TSXV. Is that correct? That That's that's correct, Gerardo. And, and just the distribution of Southern Cross shares after the escrow period also needs a plan of arrangement and, and a shareholder vote at the time. Uh, so that that's just the other process that we need to go through. Uh, I, I should say that Mawson is 70 to 80 percent institutional and high net worth. We've nearly transacted our whole float over the last year, and it's been bought for the Southern Cross position, essentially. And, and that's what we're trying to do here is protect that position. And, and also, uh, we believe Finland has huge opportunity, but it just needed to be funded separately and that's what we're doing the southern cross shareholding was always going to be distributed to shareholders initially and and due to some complications when we listed uh, we chose to keep the shares in Mawson until the end of that escrow period which gave southern cross a very great start to life it made southern cross a very tight structure but as that escrow winds down that 51 percent holding will become a burden in the australian market rather than at advantage, so it's it's solving that issue too, where where it will unlock that value of that uh, of that block and give shareholders uh, a direct holding. Excellent, Mike. I want to thank you as always for the time. I appreciate you coming on and explaining the 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 restructuring and 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 what share, shareholders you know are advised to do. Anything else that you'd like to add to that? Oh, uh, Gerardo, thank you. It's uh, been a bit longer um, than we normally speak, 15 minutes or so to, to explain that. But, uh, but three, three companies for one, and, um, and it's quite an exciting moment for Mawson shareholders. Thanks again, Mike. Chat soon. Thanks, Gerardo. Hey, everybody. Gerardo Del Real here. If you're enjoying the content that you just saw, you can let us know in three simple steps hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and please share across your network and on social media. Take care, everybody.